welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Sean. I'm back for another video. In this video today, I'm actually going to be doing another episode of hashtag I said what I said. Today we're going to be discussing Kenya Moore from The Real Housewives of Atlanta and a recent conversation that she had in a group setting with her husband at Mark Daly. So there is a lot that I want to discuss, but the main reason I want to do this video is because I get so many questions from successful women about why they're having so many issues when it comes to dating and why is their success intimidating to men and I felt like when I saw this particular clip it really sort of encapsulates and demonstrates exactly why it's an issue for some men. Let me also preface this by saying that I've never watched a full episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is in no way an attempt to bash Kenya Moore or her husband. Um, I just feel like this is a really good example for a lot of the single women that I coach and that my videos are watched by for them to kind of get an idea for how it looks from the outside looking in to a man. So let me go ahead and play the clip that I saw and then afterwards we're going to discuss it. So here it goes. What have you seen in this two years? Y'all still newbie. No, it's true. Honestly, um, we're, we're, we're different in a, in a lot of ways. Ken likes a little flash, you know what I mean? So when, you, when you say flash though. Let me finish before. Okay. Because you're jumping in. You got to respect the, the conversation. Often it's a trap. You got to respect people for their differences. And it's fine, but for me, I don't want to be Mr. Flashy. The flash is it's not real. Um, I don't necessarily think I like flash. I'm a self-made person, and I'm very proud of that fact. So with that said, I remember we had a conversation about me driving a Bentley before we got married. And we so, got so, no, I didn't say that. What did you say about my car? Can I, mean, I respond? I didn't say about the Bentley. I said, let's take care of the house before we take care of the family. But my house is paid for. So but if I want to buy a car, there's, prior, there's car, priorities. It's my money. If I want to drive a Bentley, so be it. I'm going to leave it at that. I firmly believe that women want love and men want respect when it comes to a relationship. And if you listen to Mark when he was speaking, he said respect a couple of times in that conversation. He said, respect the conversation. You have to respect people and their differences. He's telling you what it is. It's hiding in plain sight. For a woman to be successful in business and in her career, oftentimes she has to exude quite a bit of masculine energy, a certain degree of aggressiveness, standing up for herself, you know, going out there, being a go-getter, being a bit more firm, a bit more tough, you know, because you're in these spaces where it's mostly male dominated. So you really have to exude that masculine energy just for you to be heard, respected, and understood. But oftentimes the issue is when you take that masculine energy and try to apply apply it to a relationship. The only thing that a masculine woman will attract is a more feminine man. You know, if you want to be bossy, you want to call all the shots, you're a control freak, you like telling people what to do. It might seem fun in the beginning, but eventually you'll get tired of that because that's not what you're meant to do. If you want a man who's going to be firm and a man who can be a leader and all that, you have to let him lead. And you could tell from the conversation, if this is all that's being said in the public with cameras rolling in front of other couples, in front of other people, imagine what those conversations are like when the cameras aren't rolling. It's also extremely emasculating for a man when a woman is throwing her success and her money in his face. You know, the more Kenya was talking about her accomplishments and her finances and all of that, the more you saw her husband began to shrink. She was like, it's my house, my car, my house is paid for. I drove a Bentley before I even met you. All of those things are really emasculating for a man. The last thing a man wants is for you to shove your accomplishments in his face. That's as if to say, there's nothing you could do for me. That's when a man would decide to leave sometimes or if a man decides to be with someone else, I bet the woman that he'll be with is somebody who doesn't have as much because he, men have this natural uh, desire to want to be respected and to want to provide. When he's unable to do that for you, he has no idea where he fits. A man's home is his castle. If he can't be the king in his own castle, that's when he doesn't wanna be there. I think being submissive in a relationship uh, oftentimes gets a bad rap because you know we're taught to be strong, independent women, and we are and we can be. However, we don't necessarily have to exude that kind of masculine energy when it comes to our relationship in business, in our careers, in any other area of our life, but this is the time where we can relax. When we can just sort of, you know, rest in our feminine 
abilities and let somebody else lead. A man wants to come home from his nine to five job where his boss is telling him what to do and his manager and all of that. And he wants to come and, and make some decisions and, and be respected. And after being told what to do or after exerting all of that masculine energy in the career, the woman typically wants to come home and not have to worry about anything else, to have somebody else worry about the little details. As long as the love and respect are flowing, it could be a beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be. Is no somebody telling me what to do when I'm a grown woman, it doesn't have to be all of that. It could be a beautiful thing. I remember my husband told me one time, he said, I want to take care of you in such a way where the only thing you have to worry about is what you're going to cook for dinner. And he wasn't saying that like some caveman thing, like you will get in here and cook. I love to cook. So to me to have somebody say like, I want to take all of your worry away. I want to take all of your stress away. I want to absorb that for you. You have nothing to worry about. That can be a beautiful thing. You know, being feminine is about a lot more than just your hair being done, your nails being done, cute outfits and all of that. There's so much more to it. It's about an energy that you bring. It's about your softness that you're allowing him to benefit from. A part of being feminine is allowing yourself to be led. It's about knowing that you're fully capable of doing certain things, but allowing him to express his masculinity in doing those things for you. Like for me, my, my husband and I, I'm, I'm sharing a lot in this video. <laughs> when my husband and I first got together, um, you guys know I'm ex-military, so I'm used to taking care of everything on my own. I'm used to being strong and all of that. When I would come home, I would have bags and bags and bags. I'm struggling, straining, bringing in bags and bags of groceries and one day my husband was like let me help you with that and I was like no 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 I got it and he said under his breath all right tough guy and he didn't mean to like be hurtful or anything like that but I heard him and I was just like tough guy and it really sunk in that I was being masculine by not allowing him to help me with the groceries what does he how does he think these groceries get in this house when he's not around I'm doing it but I don't have to do it. So ever since then, whenever I'm like a minute away from my house and I've been grocery shopping, I will call my husband and I'll say, babe, I'll be home in like a minute or two. Can you come outside and help me with the groceries? He always says yes. He's standing at the door sometimes. He's already standing outside sometimes. He is waiting for me to be able to let him do that. Doing things like volunteering to pay for dates, you reaching for the check, you not allowing a man to open the door for you. Those are small ways that you are showing him your masculine side and the only thing all of that masculine energy will attract is a feminine man if you want a man to lead let him you don't have to be tough in a relationship this is not your job this is not your co-worker this is somebody who wants to take care of you and it makes him feel more like a man when you act more like a woman. Men love killing the spiders. They love opening that stubborn jar of mayonnaise. That's what they love to do. They love to be tough. And I've said this before, but I definitely feel like it bears repeating. Nothing changes at the altar. You cannot alter a man or alter a woman at the altar. Who you date is who you marry. You know, in the beginning, the clip that I showed you guys when uh, Mark was saying that, you know, he's, Kenya's very flashy and he's not flashy. He doesn't want to be Mr. Flashy. And she's saying, you knew how I was. You knew I had all these things. You knew I had expensive taste. I drove a Bentley before I even married you and all of that. Who you date is who you marry. You can't expect somebody to change once you've married them. So make sure that the things that you're seeing in a boyfriend, in a fiance, in someone that you're dating are things that you can put up with after you guys decide to take the relationship to the next level. But don't expect somebody to change because oftentimes they won't. And the same red flags that you ignored in the beginning will be the same red flags that you see again when the relationship is ending. All right, that is pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to thumbs up if you did. If you want to hear more of my thoughts and opinions on life and love, consider purchasing one of my books. I've written three. The first one's called The Dating Game, How to Find Yourself While Looking for Mr. Right. My second book, Breaking the Man Code, The Key to Unlocking His Heart, and my third book, Getting Unstuck, How to Create the Life You've Always Wanted to Live. They're all available on Amazon, Kindle, BarnesandNoble.com. I'll be sure to link all three of them below. And if you want to work with me as your personal life and dating coach, send me an email to itscoachshawn at gmail.com. That's itscoachshawn, S-H-A-W-N at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And on the screen, you'll see my previous episode of hashtag I said what I said. And I will see you guys in the next video. Till next time, later divas and dudes. Deuces, honey. Deuces, honey.